Hey guys, this is David from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home of Janome Junkies, and today we're going to go over how to clean your Janome computerized machine. Now, this is going to be on the 9400, but this will be universal towards all of the computerized machines for Janome, unless your manual says otherwise, but it should be good for all of them. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. So the supplies you're going to need to clean your Janome computerized machine. First, you're going to need a bottle of oil. Now this is just going to be to refill your oiling pen. If you guys don't know already, this is TriFlow Oiling. We have it in the uh, description. There's going to be a link to purchase this. This is an awesome pen. It's got a little needle nose right there. So you can stick it in the small places and oil everything you need to do. Um, so we're going to be using this for the oiling, of course. Now your machine might come with oil, so you can always use that as well, but this is just what we like to use. Um, we have cleaning swabs, which we'll also have in the description. There's going to be a link for this. You'll see why we like using these versus the little brush, which the brush is nice, but the cleaning swabs is just a little bit nicer at grabbing this stuff and pulling it out versus just kind of sweeping it around in the machine. Um, and then, of course, if you have the luxury of a small vacuum, um, you will be wanting to use this because you don't want to blow anything in the machine. You don't want to use a um, Compressor you would like to suck everything out. So we do have a shop vac um, And this we just picked up. I believe it was from like Harbor Freight It's just a little attachment that goes on top of a five gallon bucket and uh, We kind of just jerry-rigged a small hose onto the end of the vacuum with a small tip like that and you can vacuum in the small areas now Maybe one day we will make something and sell it on the website for you guys but uh, for this, for today, we're going to just be using this little jerry rig setup and it works really, really well. So let's go ahead and start off with taking off your throw plate. Alrighty guys, so the next step is you're going to want to remove the needle off your machine. So most machines, you can just go ahead and twist this little knob and your needle will come down just like so. And we're going to want to put that in an area where it's not going to poke us or hurt us later on when we're messed around in this area, okay? So we're going to go ahead and take off that needle and we're gonna take off the throw plate. And today we're gonna to be demonstrating with the 9400. So what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to just slide this over, push down on this little button right here. It'll pop up like that. Don't worry about the warning. Um, you can have the machine on if you want to, you can have it off at this point. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and take that plate off. Now, if you have a machine that you're having to unscrew it, you can just, you know, use a little T-screw or a little flathead and unscrew that. So now that we have that throat plate off, we're gonna go ahead and take the bobbin case out, just like so. And what you're gonna wanna do with this is you can use your little brush or you can use your vacuum to go ahead and just take out all those dust particles. You'll see all the stuff coming off. This machine's like mega dirty. Um, and if you wanna do this in an area where it's not just falling back on your machine, you can kind of just come down here and do it on the floor. That way you're not spreading the dust into more areas that you're gonna have to clean later on. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and clean it out with this little brush. Now here we are using the cleaning swab. I'm gonna show you how amazing this is. This might not be the best representation, but it really grabs it and pulls it off. It's microfiber, so it just kind of grips onto the stuff and just kind of pulls it right off. So something the brush really doesn't do too well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just do that all the way around the machine and all the areas. And uh, sorry about my hands. I've been working with PVC glue and great stuff the last <laughs> couple of days doing some home renovations. So now that we have the bobbin case cleaned off or the bobbin, um, we're gonna go into the machine itself. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this all the way off. Put this over here. Alrighty, so now I don't know if you guys can see how dirty this machine is, but uh, this machine has been sitting around at the store for quite some time and it's been neglected it needs to be cleaned so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start cleaning everything i would like to start off with the brush and then using um, the cleaning swab and then using the vacuum or you can start off with the vacuum and then do the cleaning swab or whatever you think works best but i'm just going to go ahead and brush off all the feed dogs the foot area get everything up high first that way when you clean down low you're not um, spreading the up high stuff down low okay so clean up and then work your way down um, so we're going to go ahead and brush all this area. You can even use these cleaning swab as you can see how it grabs it. You can just brush it off in the distance, but it really does grab everything really well. Um, these cleaning swabs, watch this, get, it, get an up close of oh the bobbin area. Look at this. It really, wow. really, Show us that. watch. 
it grabs. Wow, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. So this is almost as good as the vacuum. It really does grab Gross. all the dust and pull it out <laughs> and you can just kind of shake it off. Um, but these, these come in packs of like 25 or 30, I believe, and we'll have the link down below. So you can just throw them out once you're done cleaning once or twice with it, um, but you can reuse them. So I'm over here just wiping down all the metals. Now you wanna make sure that you don't hit the tension spring that is back here in this corner. You don't wanna knock it off. You can get near that area, but you don't wanna hit uh, the little hook too much because you don't wanna knock that off. And uh, you know, then you might have to bring in your machine to a local shop to get it worked on and put that spring back on. So we're just gonna go, go ahead and just poke around, making sure that you're not pushing too hard in areas that things can move, but cleaning off all the dust. And um, the machine's already looking a million times better. So. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more work and we'll get back right, with you guys. It. So this is the spring that I'm talking about. You can see where it hooks on right there. You just want to make sure you don't hit that tension spring because if that pops off, your timing's going to be out and your machine's not going to be too happy with you. So make sure that you're not messing around with that. And let's go ahead while we have a close up here, show you what this clean swap can do even more. Um, so even an area that I've already cleaned, it, it really does just grab the dust and pulls it right off. Um, and you can really poke this around in areas that the brush won't be able to go into. And not only is it, you know, removing the dust, but it's picking it up and pulling it. So it's great if you don't have a vacuum, but in this case, we're gonna use a vacuum on top of the cleaning swab, just because this machine is super dirty. Tip that I would like to suggest is you always want to take off your foot that way the foot is nicely out of the way so you can really reach back there behind the feed dogs if you can see on this machine let me see that real quick it uh -huh. is really really dusty back there behind those feed dogs right back here right look at all there that. look how bad all that dust is so. so it's really important to get into these canals right here this yes. right here is what's feeding the fabric through so we want to make sure you clean really good back here Alrighty guys, so now that we're done dusting off the bobbin holder area and all the components by the feed dogs and the needle bar, we're gonna go ahead and start oiling the machine. So you're gonna wanna go down to the bobbin holder and there is in the center a small little wick and you're just gonna do one little tiny drop, maybe even two if you haven't oiled your machine in a very, very long time and it looks really dry, but one should be good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do one. You can see the wick actually absorbs the liquid and the oil and it'll really hold it in there and oil, oil your machine for months to come. So now once that area is oiled, you're gonna go ahead and go to the needle bar area and you can just go ahead and move this cover like this, move it over and you can go ahead and just oil that needle bar. Uh, just one little drop is all you'll need. Right here is where I'm gonna drop it. Um, so as you can see that little drop of oil will go a long way even with the needle pen. Um, so yeah, just one little drop right there. You can see, you can move your hand wheel towards you and kind of just work it into place just like so. And now you can see that needle bar is much more shiny and it just looks really, really happy and um, excited to sew now. So now let's go ahead and put everything back together. Now, obviously if there's some dust and lint in this area, you can go ahead and take that off with the cleaning swab. Um, you might wanna do that first, that way you're not knocking it back down into your bobbin case area. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and put everything back together. Alrighty guys, one other thing to note is if you wanna um, work in this area a little bit more, always move your hand wheel um, back f or towards you, of course, but move it around and you can kind of see that things move around in there and you might expose more dust. So that's always a good thing to do while you're cleaning the machine, just move it around. Now, putting it back together, we're gonna wanna make sure that this opening is facing towards the back right here and that's going to be your hook so when you insert this bobbin case you're inserting it properly and of course when you clean your machine and on a regular basis you should always inspect your bobbin case for burrs or nicks um, i'm going to show you what a bad bobbin case will look like and this will cause a lot of issues when sewing um, so let me go ahead and grab you a bad bobbin case real quick and show you the difference from a bobbin case. And Alrighty a bad guys, case. so I went ahead and grabbed our bobbin graveyard. <laughs> and of course, I really wanna show you this. This is really important. So here is a good bobbin case. Of course, there's no burrs. You don't see any holes in it that aren't supposed to be in there. So get it really, it's really hard to hold. Let me, there you go. There you go. It's really, you know, you should inspect this, maybe even take a picture of it so you know what a brand new one looks like. So when you take it off and you clean your, your, your machine, you'll be able to see what shouldn't be on there. Your bobbin should not have 
these tiny little burrs. This one, see how it's like a little cut off right there? It shouldn't look like this. This is just not good. And this is gonna cause your machine to skip stitch, make mess, make bird nest, and it's just not gonna be good. So as you can see, this one even has a hole straight through the bobbin case. And this um, right here is and, gonna cause a big problem. Yeah, this burr of plastic right here is a huge issue. This could cause a lot of headache. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna keep going through these and kind of looking at examples. Turn on the side, you see right here, that happens from broken needles. So when you guys break a needle, it's really important to stop and find all the pieces. <laughs> that can be on your bobbin case. Yeah, because it can scratch it up. And even ins inspect the bottom. Like as you can see on the top of this one, I mean, you can see that little burr there, but it really doesn't look too bad. Yeah. Uh, but on the bobbin, the, the, the bottom and the sides are very important because that's this thing's moving around in there. And if it's not able to move around, it's going to cause very big issues and possibly even bigger issues than it needs to be. So Yeah, because the thread travels around. So if there's any scuffs on the sides, the thread's going to get caught on those little cuts into the plastic because it's wrapping around this case. So if there's little little things stopping it from doing that, that's how you get skip stitches, inconsistency, tension issues, and all that fun stuff. You gotta have it nice and smooth, just like this. That should be the first thing you look at when you start having issues. All right, you guys, so inserting back the bobbin case, you're gonna wanna make sure this opening right here is facing the back of the machine. So you see how there's an opening like that. You're gonna wanna make sure that's facing towards the back. Insert it in, kinda just move it around till it clicks into place, there you go. just like that. Like that. And uh, it should move around just a little bit, but you wanna make sure that it's facing the right way. Um, Cause if it's not, you can be a suspect of a bob, bad, bod, bad bobbin case and you don't want that, so. Alrighty, so putting the foot back on, you're gonna wanna press this button down. Then you're gonna use the lever on the back. And while you use that lever, you're gonna lift up that foot and just make sure this is perfectly underneath and aligned before you put it down. So not like that, you're gonna go right there and you should hear it click and then that's how you do it. Alrighty guys so now we're going to put the needle back on and the flat side of the needle should be facing the back of the machine of course. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to reach underneath pushing making sure to push it all the way up making sure it's all the way to the top and then go ahead and tighten down that little screw right there and you can snug that up with a little t-screw or just your hand if you, can, if you got a good enough grip. Alrighty, so now we have the needle back on and we are good to go. Hope you guys found this video very helpful. Remember to be cleaning these machines after every little project that you have and inspect your machine for those birds. If you don't do that, you're gonna run into issues and that's how you're gonna have to, you know, every now and then you might have to bring this in to get it repaired if you don't catch these small little birds before it turns into a problem, okay? And if you haven't already, click the link in the description, purchase the cleaning swabs, purchase the TriFlow oiling pen. These things will save your life when you're making, um, when you're having to clean all your machines on a regular basis, okay? So click the link in the description to purchase those. If you haven't already, download the Gigi's Fabric Shop app. If you like any of these signs or this bucket hat, we have classes on there. There's live shows on a weekly basis. They're all free. You can take classes for free. You can purchase the signs for a little bit of money and you could purchase, you know, all the other little goodies, maybe even some glide thread. So thank you for watching the video. Make sure to check out all the other Janome Junkie videos. Subscribe, like, leave a comment if you enjoy the video, and I hope you guys have a great day.